All right, lads, welcome back to me podcast, Cheaper Than Therapy, Mick Thomas here. How are you? How you doing? Thanks for liking, subscribing, sharing, and just coming on back. I do appreciate it. I am available on the YouTube. If you're watching it on the YouTube, I'm back down again in the basement in my makeshift uh, studio. Uh, whilst the other one is being built, can't get in my daughter's game room today. They're using it. So, um... I figured I'd come back, crawl back down here to the basement. I gotta, even if I'm doing temporary back down here, i got to change this backdrop to something lighter. I don't like the dark. I don't like it. May 27th, May 28th. Or is it 26, 27? I'm not too sure. The last weekend in May, Long Island. I'm headlining Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown. Come on down. Tickets available at govs.com. I uh, stay, That's the only kind of show I really have that I'm advertising right now. Uh, everything else is just kind of me chugging along at different clubs, working out new material. So lots of new material at the governor's one. So that's why I'm kind of promoting that one. Uh, not sure if I'll get an episode out to you next week. So I'm going down to South Carolina. Pew, 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 pew. South Carolina down, heading down with the family for some um, quality time, I guess. Right away from no stand up being had. Maybe, maybe I'll drop into a club down there and uh, do some material. You never know. You never know. But, uh, so I might, it, either, it might either be late next week, uh, I might just only have audio, if it's on time, I might only have audio, or I might just skip an episode, and, or maybe do one a day late, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'll try to get one out to you, but here we are on this week's one, episode 157 in the bag, 157, you think, I don't know, I feel like I've done a lot more, I feel like I've done a lot more on, um, on these episodes but also check out my other podcast with my good friend Corey brooks the man's id show available also wherever you get your podcasts little show little serious a little bit we talk about men's mental health and uh this week we talked about the female narcissist and a lot of people not liking that episode but go back and check it out yourself and a lot of people what i mean by that is women don't like that episode but that's fine check it out be a judge for yourself if you're a man if you're a woman go ahead we don't discriminate on the show um, so what did I want to talk about this week? Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, I was on Netflix. I was watching Netflix. That's what it was, uh, this week. And I watched probably for the last time, probably for the last time, because I shared Netflix. I share a password. Well, my friend gave me his password and I gave him my password for, um, you know, stuff like my HBO, my star showtime. And he gave me his Netflix, my good buddy, shout out to Eric for sharing his password with me and now netflix are now clamping down clamping down on password sharing which which is kind of like their shares have their they took a dive i think about 200 million dollars because people are saying well fuck you like why the fuck should you, you don't tell me what i do with my password you you already have a lock so a limited amount of people can use it so if i'm on it at the same time as someone else someone's going to get kicked off so don't, how dare you, right? You don't get to tell me what I do with my password. I paid for it. I do what I want with it. So as a result of that, like if I want to, if my girlfriend is away on vacation, right? If my husband is off, if my brother, you know, is bored somewhere in a hotel and he's got nothing to do, he doesn't have Netflix, have me password, mate. Go ahead. Binge watch Ozark. Who are you to say what I do with my password? So people got pissed off. And by the way, Netflix is... What, what? You don't really have that many great shows anymore. You've not. This is like. Have you ever tried to be Paul Verzi? My buddy has a great bit. I don't want to do it here because I don't know where it is on his special. If he's aired it yet, if it's going to air. But he did a fucking fantastic Netflix joke, basically comparing it to Marshalls. Um, and that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. But um, he's right. You know, like Netflix. What are you offering? Chris DeStefano's uh, special comes out May. That's that's good. I'm looking forward to that. But what what do you have? What do you have to offer Netflix? And like, this is, is this cake? I may have mentioned that on another episode before. Is this cake? So, um, that's where we are with entertainment nowadays. That's where we are. I just, my manager just sent me a good email about how, uh, television shows for pilot season. If you don't know, basically pilot season is a bunch of ideas for TV shows. McDonald's may have one in there. Um, they have, they take these ideas and they make the pilot and then they air it and they'll see if, Hey, do you like this show? Would you invest in that? And so this is what works better. You don't hear if you don't know how the, the, the pilots work, how a TV show gets made. This is what's fucked up about it. You go out, you write a show. You being a talented person who is, uh, 
fucked up and tortured. Because you have to be fucked up and tortured to write a really good dramatic show. You have to be, or to write a dark comedy. You have to have some sort of issues on, right? Then you go write that show. You pour your heart into that show. The network goes, we kind of like that idea. It's good. Someone forward thinking person goes, yeah, someone with, who, be, be, Michael, we like that. We like that. Let's go ahead and make it. They give you the money, you go ahead and make the pilot. Then that pilot gets shown into a little tiny theater, a little room full of Coca Cola, Pepsi, um, AutoZone. Burger King, McDonald's, all these Pfizer, all these commercials, these commercial companies. And they go, would you advertise on that show? This show could be fucking amazing. Could be the best show out there. And if they go, no, we wouldn't advertise on that. Guess what? They fucking pull the plug and the show doesn't get made. So the determination, the the, the deciding factor of a TV show gets made isn't by the, 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 the people with creative minds. It's fucking advertisers. And that's why... You may have wondered, like, I don't know why they canceled that show. I don't know why they canceled that show. It was such a good show. Because something wasn't, they weren't happy with it. Let it be numbers. Let it be some sort of person that wasn't happy with because they used a certain joke that they didn't like. So it's basically people who can't do that job um, are now um, deciding if that job should be done. Does that make sense? Like, I wouldn't go onto a plane and tell the pilot, he's not a great pilot. He's not. I wouldn't have done it like that. Because I can't be a pilot. I can't be a surgeon. Um, I'm sure I could. Give me the training. What? Two weeks training? I'd be fine. Um, you know, so it, it turns out that there's only 10 out of all the hundreds of pilots that were put forward, only 10 were comedies. Why? I think because, well, we live in a world now where it's too hard to make, to, to make jokes now because people are so fucking sensitive. People are so sensitive now. And this is what leads me to this point. People are so um, uptight they don't, and a lot of them are not uptight. A lot of them are fake offended. A lot of them are playing the game of, oh, I'm so woke and I disagree with that. Therefore, we shouldn't, yeah, even though that joke is funny, it shouldn't be said on television. Like, I deal with that every day on Twitter, which is hysterical. Not on Twitter. I'm off Twitter. I don't have Twitter. Um, on TikTok every day. I put one joke up a day. And even though it's a joke, it's not offensive in any way. I don't tell, I try not to tell offensive jokes on there. But people don't understand that they're jokes, so they will debate the punchline as if it's real and factual. So that's the world you live in, right? That's the world. That's the world we live in. Um, people will debate if the, the like I did a joke. I had an old joke years and years ago about becoming a citizen. Did between a citizen and a permanent resident. Permanent resident means I can buy a gun, but because I'm not a citizen, means I can't have a notary stamp. So the joke is basically, you'll give me a stamp. You'll give me a shotgun, but you won't give me a stamp. And that's the joke. You know what I mean? I do, And that's the joke, right? And and But the amount of people that are debating and fighting on there, they're, they're, these are kind of the people that I'm talking about. Um, so this is the world we're living in now. This is the world we're living in where we don't know, um, where people can't take jokes. They don't know if they should take a joke. And even sometimes people find jokes funny and they won't laugh at them because they know they shouldn't laugh at them, even though their instinct is to laugh. But then their brain takes over and goes, you better not, better not laugh at that because you'll get in trouble. But it's funny. No, no, you can't. Um, and, that, and that's, so that's, that's why there's 10 comedies. And, and here's, this is a long way of me to set up my point. So there's a documentary I watched on Netflix. I don't know why I was sleepy. I don't nap. And I just lay down on my bed and I took my iPad out and I turned on Netflix. Thanks, Eric, again for the password. And I just lay on there and I was scrolling through the garbage that is Netflix, the gar the, the lack of shows. Because all the good shows that were on there, kind of, I guess they lose their term. I don't know if that's, I don't know the insight is that part of the business that maybe their contract was up. Like I know Friends was up uh, at the office, you know, stuff you might want to binge watch where you don't really have to pay attention to. You know, like just whatever it is, whatever it is. Sons of Anarchy, good show. So, um... I would watch, I watched this documentary called White Hot. White Hot. And it's about Amber Crombie and Fitch, the clothing store. Here's what I realized. Here's what I realized go, about the, 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 the going forward where world we're living in now is that it's the first documentary. The, the chickens have come home to roost. The crop is ready. Uh, you reap what you sow, all of that stuff. Now the fruits of our labors are are here. What I'm on about, what I'm bullshitting on about now is that everybody who, you know that the generation of everyone gets a trophy? It's finally here. They've grown up now. The everybody gets a trophy documentary 
is Amber Crombie and Fitch. What do you mean, Mick? I'll tell you now. Hang on a second. So the story about Amber Crombie and Fitch. I, I, first of all, when I moved to, to America, first of all, Amber Crombie and Fitch were still great. So we were talking about nearly 20 years ago. I nearly moved here. I moved here nearly 20 years ago. And I was went for a walk in the mall. Never been into a mall before. They, have them, they had them in Ireland. Not to this level, not to America's level, right? You had Stevens Green in Dublin, maybe. And that wasn't really considered like an American style mall. Uh, there was no food court at the time, Stevens Green. You know what I mean? There was um, just a few shops, whatever. And I think what made it a mall was an escalator. So I moved to America. I'd never seen a mall. Like these are, oh, you've seen them in movies. You saw them in all, you know, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and whatever. And I, I passed the store, Amber Crombie and Fitch, with a shirtless boy whore outside. And I was blown away. I was like, what is this man doing outside here with no shirt? Like, and you kind of have secondhand douche chills for him. You got really um, secondhand embarrassment, I think it's called. But I got douche chills for the kid. I was like, what, mate? What did I make you do? Like, is that not illegal? Like, I remember going to Amsterdam. Walking down the red light district. Just visiting. Just seeing what it was like. <clears throat> walking down the red light district and these these prostitutes in the window spinning on poles and waving to you and that's what it reminded me of right like like come on in here i was like what what's i don't get what's going on in the store and it had the big brown windows so you couldn't see in what was going on there and i was just a shirtless boy whore and inside you could <laughs> and the shirtless boy whore is outside and in great shape by the way very intimidating very, very intimidating. Like, you're like, uh, and I've been in great shape in my life. I've had my ups and downs. I go through stages where I do get in phenomenal shape. And then I fucking binge and get a nice big fat gut. Uh, and then I go back down to try being good again. I get big and muscular. I get small and lean. This guy intimidated the shit out of me. And I was like, holy fuck. So I took... And the smell is hitting you of this cologne. Like, oh, this is awesome. And I go inside and it's just a fucking rave. It's a rave that sells jeans and t-shirts. That's what it was. And I remember, like, I bought a button shirt. I didn't give a fuck. I'm not a big... I'm about to make a point that's contradicting myself, you fucking idiot, but I'll say it anyway. I'm not a big fan of wearing logos. Look at that. Look at that, you fucking two-faced liar, you Mick Thomas. Um, I wasn't a fan of logos. You know what I mean? Like, where, where like, someone buys a shirt from The Gap, and it just says GAP across it. It's a terrible shirt. It just says GAP. You know what I mean? Like, like I never got st st uh, stuff that advertised the brand. This is a cool fucking, I like these. These are kind of, I, I, I just like them. I know it says Adidas on it, or Adidas is the same in America, but Adidas is the same in Ireland. Um, I'm aware I'm wearing one, but I just never got those big Gap ones. Um, you know, Amber Crombie Fitch was another one. I, I, I just these shirts that w said the thing of what you, w so you're basically, hey, can I, can I buy one of your shirts and advertise it for you? That's basically what you're saying. It's the dumbest thing. Can I buy one of your things and just go advertise it in the world? Yeah, go ahead. How much is it? $20? $30. Fucking hell. All right, I'll pay you $30 and I'll advertise your product for you. That was, I never understood that. But, uh, and again, I'm aware of what I'm wearing now in this video, so relax. Um, and it, it did, so that's like Amber Crump. You walk in and it was just a party and gorgeous people working there, men and female. So the documentary comes out and it's it's a, it's about really what it's about. It's about this guy, uh, Mike Jeffries, who is the owner of Abercrombie Fitch and a gay lad, right? A gay lad, which is the good thing about Abercrombie Fitch, right? It was very it was very uh, pro gay at a time when a lot of places weren't right. It was openly like the men were kind of wrestling with each other in the pictures and all oiled up and shirtless. And it was very pro gay, which was nice. It was very, very homoerotic. And it was, it was good to see. It was good to see that, they, you know, because it was brave when you think about it. Because if you saw something like that, two guys with their arms around each other with no shirt on 20 years ago, you're like, look at fucking, 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 insert slur word there. Um, but it didn't. And it was, it was, it was, you know, good for them. Good for them. So what it is, is all these people who were talking and getting interviewed and all these people who used to work there. But they're all complaining. And there's a bunch of people complaining that, they didn't get hired because they weren't good looking enough. And that's where my point, that's where my problem was. This is where the, everybody gets a trope. Now, they they were saying that they were racist, right? The company was racist because they never, I mean, the stores I worked in, there was a lot of 
uh, black people working there, uh, attractive black people, by the way, uh, attractive Asians. Attra- the reason why I'm using the word attractive because they don't hire unattractive people to work in the stores. By the- you need- that's the point I'm trying to make. That's why I keep putting attractive in front of the world. The word attractive white people, attractive black people, attractive Asian people, uh, attractive Middle Eastern people, attractive Hispanic people, all all gorgeous people. They were all gorgeous people. And then there was a bunch of fucking, you know, monsters who were saying, like, I didn't get a job there and it's not fair and they should be cancelled because they didn't hire me. And, and and the whole documentary is just everybody gets who got a trophy and now told that, no, you don't. You, you can't work here because you're not good looking enough. And that's basically what the documentary is about. That's what they're saying. You weren't, you know, and then they tried to sue them for discrimination. Now, there was one person who won a case, uh, which I kind of agree with. I did side with that person. The whole documentary, I'm not siding with anybody. I'm like, listen, this is fucking America. This is capitalism. You know what? If you want to have a certain fucking look, if you want to have a certain type of person that works in your store, they have to be a certain build. They have to be a certain shape. Um, then by all means, go for it. That's your fucking store. That's your business. If people don't like it, I just don't have to shop there, which will bring the profits down and then they should change their direction in which, like, that's what capitalism is. That's what, that's what moving forward is. That's what a free country is. If I only want to fucking market to this type of people, then let them come in. Do you know what I mean? So, there's a lot of that going on, but there was one case where a girl, she was Muslim and they told her, you can't wear your... Uh, forgive me, uh, I can't remember the word. Uh, the, the female's headscarf. Um, I have an, I have a guess of what it would be, but I don't want to mess it and sound it up and then get cancelled because I messed it up wrong. But I genuinely don't remember the name of what it's called. I hear it in my head, but I think if I say it out, it kind of sounds terrible. Um, but um, so they, they, she went to court and she won. And I, I kind of maybe, I don't know if I, agree, I, I kind of do agree with that one, right? That's the religious belief and that's how they live their life. That's how they live their morals. And I think maybe let that one slide. I, I would, if it was up to me, my humbled opinion, I would say that. But for, for the most of it, it really is just a lot of people who were gorgeous people, by the way. Um, they felt like, well, we were told to go in the storeroom when corporate were visiting uh the storeroom needed to be cleaned and they felt they were sent back there because like one group of people said well, we were asian so we were sent back there to clean the storeroom look if someone has to do it when you're working at Abercrombie and fitch and you're a teenager stop it like you're gonna have to do the shitty jobs that nobody wants to do did you want the executive job is that what you wanted you started there at 19 or 16 17 18 19 you're attractive enough to work there. And just because they put you in the storeroom, you're like, well, they put me there because I was Asian because corporate were coming down. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's a lot of crybaby shit going on. There's a lot of, we got trophies when we were younger because we were always told we're awesome. And now I'm told I'm not awesome. So therefore I have to sue. Therefore I have to sue. And there's a lot of fake discrimination going on. This is what they said. Um, again, I will go say with the lady with the Muslim. I feel personally that she... Uh, she did have a kind of a good case. But the rest of them, I'm like, you fucking whiny people. You got hired, didn't you? Did you not or did you not get hired by the company? You did. So therefore, you passed the test of fucking attractiveness, right? So you got that much. But then all of a sudden, you kind of felt that you weren't getting the hours you wanted uh, because you felt you weren't attractive enough. So you kind of wanted to sue them. And, that, and this is it, like... You, we did this with the Victoria's Secrets fashion show. Now, some might come on here and go, no, well, because one of the guy, the owner from fucking Victoria's Secrets was found on Epstein's Island and he kind of wanted to keep his name down. So he fucking shut down the Victoria's Secrets fashion show. No, he didn't. Everybody complained about how unrealistic those women were. Those fucking angels. Those goddesses. And I've complained on this three years in a row, two years in a row now in this podcast around Christmas time when the, when, when the Victoria's Secrets fashion show comes on. I've complained enough about it that you people got it cancelled because they're not realistic bodies. Well, that, That's why they're there. That's why they are there for that reason. Because they are who they are. They look like that's what their brand is. Did you watch the NFL? Do you watch the NBA? And go, you know what? They should put Mike... The guy who fixes my muffler in there. I see him play fucking basketball down at the YMCA. He's got a good jump shot. Why isn't he playing for the fucking Rockets? It doesn't work like that. Because on the fucking court of the NBA are elite athletes who are better than you at fucking playing basketball. 
They're better than you on the field. They're better than you on the ice. Baseball doesn't count. Anyone can play baseball. Um, you know what I mean? And you're fucking... You don't get to complain. That's the Victoria's Secret fashion show. Those women are fucking there for a reason. We want to see those women. We do. We do. When your husband turns to you, when that fashion show comes on, and she goes, do you think that's attractive? And he goes, no, honey. I think those women are disgusting. I wish they were fatter. He is lying through his fucking teeth to you. Those women are fucking amazing. It's an unachievable goal. You don't have to achieve that goal. That's why they are there. That's why we have LeBron James fucking jumping 20 feet in the air and dunking on people with his balls in your face because he's LeBron James. Do you know what I mean? I don't know any football players. I really don't. The last American football... Oh, uh, Brady. Tom Brady. John, is there a George Brady too? The only, I swear to God, the only American footballer I could name up until the Bradys came along was the refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, that's how far back I, I fucking know about football. That's how dumb my football knowledge is. But we don't, I don't complain that I don't get to go out there. They have a certain brand. They have a certain idea they want for their company. And if you're not it, you're not it. Just accept it and move on. Don't try bring down the estate. My brother used to do that, the little cunt. When I used to go play with my friends. He used to go and play with my friends on the street all the time. And he would go, can I play? No, you're too small. You're going to slow us down. We're playing the A team. We already have four of us. He's BA. I'm Hannibal. He's fucking Murdoch. And that guy's face. What are you going to be, Jeff? There was no Jeff in the A team. We already had everybody. We had Colonel fucking, we had Colonel Decker. We had all of them. We had, all, we had the full cast. You're not playing. I'm telling my ma. Then my ma will come out and yell at us and make me fucking let him play the game. It doesn't work like that. They have a certain... Go to Hooters. Send, bring your nana to Hooters. She just retired and she goes, you know what? I want to get out of the house for a few days a week. Bring fucking 80-year-old nana to Hooters and go, can I get a part-time job? They'll go, sorry, we're not hiring you. Why? Because you're tucking your tits into your fucking pockets, love. And you're 85. No man wants to come in here and eat and watch a fucking 85-year-old woman watching her tits fucking go straight back and forth in the chicken nuggets. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. And that's the point I'm trying to make about this whole fucking thing. It, 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 the documentary is made by everybody gets a trophy, trophy generation. There was one or two cases of discrimination there. I do agree 100%. The rest of them I think, eh... Uh, you didn't get what you wanted, so you figured, I'll just knock it down. I'm taking my ball and going home. Except it's not even your fucking ball. It belongs to them. How about you go out and realize that you're just not going to be a certain type of human being. We can't all be Brad Pitts. We can't be. We can't all be The Rock. We just can't be. They're there for a reason. We can't be Angelina Jolie. We can't be, I don't know, who's the hot? Scarlett Johansson. You just can't be them. You can't be them because they put a lot of work into being Ryan Reynolds. They put a lot of work into being The Rock. All right? And then they deserve that fucking place where they are. We just And if you don't get what you want, you can't just shut it down for the rest of us. I miss the Victoria's Secrets fashion show. I would not shop at Abercrombie Fitch just because they didn't, they didn't hire certain people. What I mean by that, I mean ugly people. I mean ugly people. That's what I mean by that. I wouldn't get mad at them because it didn't hire unattractive. You know what I mean? And most teenagers are wankers anyway. When do you get a helpful teenager? Go to a store. Go to Chipotle nowadays and try to get a burrito made. They're fucking useless. Teenagers are fucking useless. Look, I'll leave it at that. That's what else I'm going to say. Stop giving everybody trophies. Stop patting everybody in the back. Let's just realize that in life, you can't always get what you want. Mick Jagger to Rolling Stones. May 27, 28, or 26, 27, not too sure. Last weekend of May, I am at Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown. Come see me. Check out the Man's Eye Show. Oh, by the way, May 11th. Forgot to tell you. Shit, May 11th. Heading out to Hollywood. ba da da Hollywood. Yeah, I'm going to be at the uh, the Hollywood Improv. Uh, so if you're out in LA, you like the show, you're listening. Fans out in California are asking me, when are you coming to Hollywood? When are you coming to L.A.? I'll be out there, L.A., May 11th, at the Hollywood Improv. Uh, the show's getting close to sold out. Get your tickets, jump on there. Anyway, thanks so much for listening, liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Do it all. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much. 
And always wash your hands, you dirty fuckers. Good luck to you. Good luck to you.